Hola my sexy compadres y mamacitas. Today is a very special day and this video is very special because I've been on YouTube for 5 years. Could you believe that 5 years I've been doing this crap? And to start off I'm going to be talking about something that's really really great. Really something that everyone loves and it's what made my channel. Pokemon! Pokemon is great. Oh. What's that? Ooh. What's that? Okay, uh Hey, yo, calm down. No need to be a scapa gazon. I'll save the damn Pokemon video for another time. Now, to be fair, I was going to release two more Animal Crossing videos to my channel. They were the tidbits and tips videos. However, when I finished editing them, they felt bland. It was kind of like, oh, you know, hey, that's how you get the golden axe. Whoopee. Oh, hey, coconuts on your island. That's how you get a Galathic beetle. Goliath. God forbid I mispronounced something. So, when I, when I was looking at my old channel, because I, I had to do the copyright claims and all that stuff because they took down my Wind Waker and Link Between Worlds walkthrough system that YouTube is, I saw my original Pokemon is Awesome series and my Mega Man is Awesome series. My Blank is Awesome series, which is my favorite series that I brought to this channel. I basically get to talk about why I love a game so much and why I think it's awesome. So I said, yeah, you know what? These fans deserve a good video. They deserve something edited amazingly. So you know what? How about I give them Animal Crossing is Awesome. So this is going to be a restructured video of the Blank is Awesome series because the Pokemon one was like kind of like a rant and then the Mega Man was just god forbid that was a mess. Yes, part two is coming. I'm, part two, I'll explain at the end of the video. Anyway, so guys and gals, mom, compadres, mamacitas, anyone who's watching this video, I present you why I think Animal Crossing is an awesome game. The Anim Animal Crossing is awesome. Bada bing, bada boom. Hey, kiss it easy. Now, like I said, this Animal Crossing video is going to be the new template for all the Blank is Awesome videos. I'm going to be breaking down the different parts and talking about why I think it's awesome. I'll talk about the game in a few categories, such as history, story, setting, music, characters, gameplay, and the last thing I'm going to be talking about is the personal memories I've had with the game. That part is going to be completely unscripted and staying true to the original video I've done, because I feel when I do something unscripted, it, my emotions come out a little bit more. So, what I'll do is the history part of Animal Crossing. Back in the early 2000s, Nintendo was really pushing for the 64 Double D Drive, and a game produced by Takashi Tezuka called Animal Crossing, or should I say, the Butsu no Mori, or just Animal Forest, was a game that would be perfect for it. Since the Nintendo 64 Double D Drive had a way to utilize a real-time clock for the system, the game relied on it. However, time was ticking and the project just went to Nintendo 64, and that was the end of the Nintendo 64 era, so Japan said, you know, this really is not going to get much sales on the 64, so let's move it to the GameCube and just name it Animal Forest Plus. And they said, hey, let's try it in the Western market. Let's see how people might like it. Before that happened, the game had to be heavily translated from Japanese to English. These translators worked their asses off because there's a lot of Japanese characters. However, they said this game is a little too Japanese for the uh, Western audience. Let's spice it up, add a little bit of Christmas, Kwanzaa, all the good stuff. And they released it as Animal Crossing. This game was a hit in the United States. On Animal Crossing from Nintendo GameCube. Nice outfit. Where'd you get it? A garbage dump? Uh Nintendo Japan was so impressed by the results of the translations done by the Nintendo of America's Treehouse Television that they said, hey, you know, how about we borrow your game Animal Crossing and we take it back, we retranslate it back to Japanese and release it to the Japanese audience as Animal Forest E+. You know, the e-reader thing that no one bought. Anyway, it was released in Japan in June 27, 2003 and it sold 91,000 copies in the first week of its sales. Being that Animal Crossing sold so well, a few years later for the Nintendo DS, Animal Crossing Wild World was released in 2005. This was the first game of the series to utilize the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. And this was a great thing for the series, because previously for multiplayer, you had to switch out the memory cards of your GameCube, and you couldn't simultaneously play with your white friend. They couldn't, like, you couldn't be in the same village, it was only one person at a time. Now with this, it's Wi-Fi, you can go to their town and play with them, they can go to your town, it was really, really great. After that, knowing that the Wii was owning the gaming market, seriously, that thing was selling like crazy. Nintendo wanted to capitalize this, and they made Animal Crossing City Folk in 2008. However, this didn't sell that well because it was during a very close time that Wild World was released. It didn't give time for Wild World to breathe like a fine wine, so people mostly wanted to stick with Wild World because one, it was on the DS, it's a lot cheaper to own than a Wii, and two, is a little bit more convenient to play. 
Then after this, it was a big break. There was no news of a next Animal Crossing game, and everyone was wondering, where we love this series. So, Animal Crossing New Leaf came out, and everyone loved this game. And it sold well. Oh yeah, there was that Animal Crossing Plaza thing that was released for the Wii U in 2013, aka, there's gonna be a Wii U version soon, just wait. Now here's some statistics for you if you are interested in that. Animal Crossing sold 2.3 million copies, Wild World sold 10.8 million. City Folk only sold 3.4 million, Animal Crossing New Leaf is selling 6.5 million as of time as I wrote this script and got the statistics and that was from November. Previously another statement said they sold about 7 million, so around the ballpark of 6.5 to 7. Also there's an Animal Crossing film, and I personally love it. So if you want to go check it out, type it in the Animal Crossing anime film, it's a great film, it's cutie, it's all that stuff. And oh yeah, the village is going to be in Super Smash Bros. Animal Crossing has come a long way in history. It came from a simple game to actually being featured in an anime film, and now it's going to be on the biggest stage of them all, Super Smash Bros. Hopefully that when people see Super Smash Bros. and never seen an Animal Crossing game before, they'll be interested, because this game is truly great. And there's really no story for these games. Animal Crossing has no law or anything. It's a community simulation game. They all start mostly the same way. The player, aka you, is moving into a new town to start his new life, or her life. Animal Crossing New Leaf is a little bit different because you suddenly become mayor when you move into your new village, however they all play the same. You get a house which you slowly pay off, you collect bugs and fish to either put in the museum or to sell for bells with currency in the game, make friends, do some mayor duties in New Leaf which I'll get into later on, and just have fun. The story is your own story. Now let me tell you something, the music for Animal Crossing is superb, and you know why it's composed by a very, very, very famous Nintendo composer, Kazumi Totaka. This guy did this little beat, Totaka song, you know, the little mysterious theme that's hidden in a lot of Nintendo games. This guy even has a character based off of him named KK Slider. KK Slider's Japanese name is Toka KK. Now, it's not he's KK Slider's not entirely based off of him. His Jap his Japanese name is based off of Totaka, so it's a little like Easter egg if you didn't know. So if you didn't know, there you go. If you knew, sorry I bought it. Anyway, KK Slider, I'll explain a little bit later in the character section. However, let me talk about the music in this game. The music is superb because it's hourly. Every hour the music slowly changes. In the morning, it's a nice beat theme. You wake up, you have your cup of coffee, you get outside your house, you wave to your neighbor. In the afternoon, it's a little bit more relaxing. You go to the beach, you cast your fishing rod out, you get some fish, you hunt some bugs. And in the evening, the theme slows down. You know, it's nice, okay, I'm gonna turn down. However, my favorite themes are past midnight. The 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., blah, 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 those themes. Because at that time, it's mysterious. The music is a little bit eerie, though, which I love. It's like if you go out at midnight or something like that. You just want to walk around your town. It's mysterious. It's eerie. You're by yourself. But however, it's beautiful. Totaka, you did an amazing job. And I absolutely love the soundtrack for every single Animal Crossing game. Hey, let me tell you something. The characters in Animal Crossing are amazing. It's really what makes the game. Anyway, let's start talking about the villagers. There's like 460 of them, and people complain about Pokemon. Now, I'm not going to be talking about all 460 characters. However, I'm going to be talking about their personalities. They're broken up into four groups per gender. Now, let's talk about the males. You have the cranky villagers, who are the hardest to get along with. You know, it's like your angry Jewish next door neighbor. You know, hey, what are you doing on my lawn? You schmooch the roots to get off! You know, it's those type of guys. Then you have the lazy villagers who are laid back and they're the easiest to get along with and easiest to befriend. Then you have the jock villagers who are the stereotypical dim-witted scapagazones who talk about exercise. You know, the guys who are like, hey, you talking to me? You see this? You're gonna insult me? You insult the family? Fungu? Hey, 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 you know. Those type of guys. And lastly, the newest addition, the smug villager, aka the gentleman, the one who wears the fedora, the one who tips the fedora to the ladies and opens the door, the gentleman. But be careful, you don't want to put them in the friend zone because they might cry. Oh, I give Becky so much attention, but she doesn't like me for who I am. She just wants to see me as a friend. Boo hoo, let me go cry on Tumblr. 
I'm kidding. The smug villagers are actually a great addition to the game. Then the females are broken up into four groups also. You have the snooties, aka the people you went to high school with who still think their shit don't stink and post shit on Facebook of how much they love themselves and hashtag everything. Brittany, you don't have to hashtag Italian for making a meal on Facebook. <sighs> <clears throat> Then you have the normal villages, aka the best villages. They're the easiest to get along with. They're, they're just kind of like the lazy knit villagers. They're the easiest one in the female group. Then you have the peppy villagers, you know, the guys like, Oh my god, you just see Brittany with those shoes, ah! Why is everyone Jewish in this video? And then lastly, you have the uh, new one, the Uchi, which is a new class. It's kind of like your older sister, you know? They, you get a beast thing, they'll take care of you. So they're very warm and comforting. From these eight personalities, about 460 characters were born from them. And these NPCs are the people that you're going to be friends with. They're going to, you're going to befriend them. You're going to build a relationship with these characters, either love or hate. People absolutely go crazy over specific villagers. Like I go on GameFAQs when this game first came out, and people were actually selling their villagers like slaves for certain items or other villagers. It's like you see threads of Pietro going, Oh, you want to buy me 10,000 bells? Oui, oui, I throw in the baguette. Aujourd'hui, it's crazy how people go crazy for some of these villagers. These villagers' roles are actually important. You fish with them, you play games with them, and you even become pen pals with them. You become friends with these characters, and you actually see the progression of your relationship. Best example, the cranky villagers. When you first meet them, they're going to be like, Oh, what do you want? Leave me alone. And afterwards, they're going to be like, Hey, come over for some matzo soup. I'll come over to your house. Here's a picture of me hanging over your fireplace. It's crazy how much these characters progress. At first, you really don't see it, but when you slowly play the game, you actually see it. It's the game's greatest feature, and you can legitimately get sad when your favorite villagers move out out of your town. I didn't play my game for about three weeks when Puddles moved out of my town because I didn't play the game for about a week or so and then all of a sudden I wake up and I see Puddles is gone. I was so upset. She was one of my favorite villagers. And I was like, damn it, I'm not doing this anymore. So yes, this these villagers play such an important role. Now let me move to the NPCs. Animal Crossing has so many NPCs, so I won't cover every single one. I'm only going to cover the important ones in my opinion. And I'm going to stick with Animal Crossing New Leafs characters because it's the most recent game you've played. Now, my favorite of these are the Able Sisters. These sisters will sell you clothing and allow you to create your own clothing also. You can create a variety of hats, t-shirts, shirts, ranging from anime designs to personal designs. It's amazing. Now you're probably still looking at your screen and saying, Peter, are your nipples glowing purple? Yes. Yes, my nipples are glowing purple. <laughs> Next is Vladis, an owl who owns an empty museum. Wonderful. And to fill up this museum, it's your responsibility. So you have to catch the bugs, you have to reel in the fish, dig up the fossils, and buy those paintings. And then fill up the museum so this owl can be happy. Next is Reese, the owner of the resale shop. This is where you're going to be making your bells. And if you want to know how to make bells in Animal Crossing, which is really, really easy, you can click this video up above. Shameless plug-in. Next we have Mr. Rossetti, a mole who's, well, annoying. But his job is to make sure all players save continuously throughout gameplay. The more the player resets within the Animal Crossing games, the angrier he gets. So make sure you save your game. This feature is implemented because they want to make this game as real life as they can. In life, you can't just say, oh, I made a mistake, let me just turn the power button, turn it on, and bada bing, it's not there anymore. No. Of course, in this game, that'll happen, but they just want to make it sure that you can't reset in life. So, play this game how you would play in real life. Then we have K.K. Slider, like I mentioned before. He's the game's soundtrack. He performs music for the player, which you can collect and play during game. There are a total of 91 songs. These songs you can put in your house, you can play them, and this is why I say he's an important role by playing music, because other than that, he doesn't really do anything, you just collect music from him. Then is Isabel, the greatest thing to happen to Animal Crossing since the game was first translated. She assists the player in his or her own role as town mayor, and as the secretary. She is wonderful, she's cute, she's adorable, she's Charming. She's just a great feature. I hope that she's implemented in the next game somehow. Even if she can move in in your town, that you can visit her after hours or something like that. That would be really cool to build a relationship with another character, specifically an NPC, instead of, you know, just the villagers. And lastly, we have the pimp daddy himself, Tom Nook.
People think he's a bad guy because you owe him money, but he's not. The co-director of Animal Crossing, Aya Kogoku, says he doesn't force you to pay, it's your own choice to go into debt. We think he's very misunderstood. He's passionate about his business. He's not a loan shark. He doesn't add a handle fee or anything like that. He waits as long as it takes to pay him back. He's not bad as other people might think of him. In games leading to Animal Crossing New Leaf, he owns the town shop where you can buy and sell items. In New, Sh New Leaf, he owns a shop called Nook Homes, a real estate place where you can buy supplies to customize your house, like certain fences and stuff. His two nephews now own the shop where you will sell your goods and stuff. That's pretty much a quick summary of all the characters you'll see in the game. I can go on for days just talking about the characters, so it's best if you play the game and experience them. However, I'm not gonna lie, Nook, he's a pimp daddy. Now let's just say you have a fresh brand new copy of Animal Crossing. And as soon as you open up your game, you're on your way to a new life, and you're traveling by cab, bus, or train. Most of the time you're greeted by a rover, which will ask you a few questions, will determine the look of your character. And after that, you're onto your new town and your new life. You're gonna settle down, find your house, and after that, you just need to pay off your mortgage and it's yours. Like I said, there's no real plot to this game. There's no you win or game over. You play it at your own place. You could earn money by selling items, fish, or bugs. You could run around and plant flowers and trees, shake those trees, fish, play games with your fellow villagers, go for a swim. It's a very relaxing game. My foreign father even knows how to play this game. And that's the guy who used to think that Wii Boxing was you had to punch the person next to you with the Wii Remote. Most of the games are the same. You have holiday events, you have events with your villagers, you have events with Isabel. However, a new leaf, a new feature is added. The mayor. You set the town ordinance and you create public work projects. And the public work projects is a little spice for your town. You can add windmills, you can add flower clocks, gardens and such. And it's a small way to improve your town and make your town your own unique creation. These are all managed in town hall in the mayor's office. Other than that, the gameplay is pretty much the same. There's no difficult controls, there's no quick time events. It's a really easy game that you can pick up and play for hours. And I highly recommend it. Now guys, this is the unscripted part of the video called the personal memories, and I want to take you to the original video of the Blank is Awesome if you reach this Pokemon. That video was completely unscripted. I had a lot more fun rather than reading a script. And this part, you can actually see since it's unscripted, you're going to see a little bit more emotion because I'm talking from my personal memories rather than reading from a script. So let's talk about Animal Crossing. My first memories with Animal Crossing was for the GameCube, and that was the original game. I don't know when I got it. It was either during uh, Christmas or my birthday, but I do remember my mom buying it for me. And we would have so much fun with the game. We would sit down for hours and catch bugs, and we would catch fish and we had the prima guidebook so uh, we would have to check off each fish we had or each fossil we got and donate it to the museum we paid off the mortgage and I, I don't want any of you complaining that it. it's hard to get bells and new leaf because play the original animal crossing game it's a nightmare to make money in that game after you finish paying off your mortgage you get this like golden statue it was a real accomplishment and i just love those memories of my mom and i'm a mama's boy so if any of you cabrones want to say shit go ahead i really don't care so uh then after that uh, we we uh, we just had a lot of fun with that, and then a few months later, uh, we went to uh, GameStop to buy a, buy a new game from me or something like that, and I saw the action replay for that game. And the action replay, for, and I, I don't like cheating devices. I don't think they take the fun out of the game, but I really wanted to see because we beat the game, so let's have a little bit more fun. So we got the cheating device, and how to do this? You had to uh, you had to take the disc, you had to put in the game, you had to select your codes, and take the disc out and put the Animal Crossing disc in really, really fast, and then it would just overwrite the game. It was really, really cool. So we did like the uh, Unlimited Bells, never have to deal with Mr. Rossetti, and then we did the Nintendo items, and this had like a warning label like on it, so I was like, okay, maybe it's going to corrupt the game, something like that. So I clicked it, and then all of a sudden, you get all the Nintendo items. There's like flagpoles for Mario, but I think the best part was the Nintendo Entertainment System games, the NES games inside the game. There was Zelda, Mario, and then there was Punch-Out. And me and my mom played Punch-Out for days. We played Animal Crossing in order to play Punch-Out after we beat Animal Crossing. And we were trying so hard. We'd go through Glass Joe. We'd go for everyone. We'd have to, we, we could never beat Mike Tyson. He was the hardest guy to beat. And back then, there was really no, like, YouTube or anything. So you couldn't go up online and look everything up. You know, the internet was uh, iffy. So it was really, really hard to actually get help and tips and stuff. So you had to, like, you had to actually physically play the damn game in order to get better. We had so much fun with that. A few years later, then, um, Wild World came out. And my cousin Gabby, I don't have any brothers and sisters. I'm an only child. So me and my cousin are really, really close. So my cousin Gabby, uh, we go to Connecticut every summer. And uh, we play Animal Crossing in the morning and in the evening. At the end of the summer vacation, 
uh, she got me a little gift inside the game as a thank you, and it was the pilot's cap. And my town never had this, and I'm a pilot. I'm currently in uh, aviation school, and next I'm going to med school. I'm going to be in school until I'm 30. But uh, other than that, uh, I was so happy because I got the aviation, you know, the, the little pilot's cap. I got it from my cousin. It was really, really it was a great little gift. And uh, if I open up my Wild World game, I still have the hat on. Uh, then City Folk came out. I don't have a lot of memories of City Folk. Um, I was really, really excited for the game though because um, I'm from Long Island, New York. So taking the city, I would just take a long. I would go to the, go to the city. I would just take the Long Island uh, Railroad, which is five minutes away from my house by walking. So I would always go to the city, always having a fun time. So uh, my cousin Gabby didn't have a Wii though, so I couldn't play with her. But I played with a few of my friends, and then there was this, like voice box thing you'd put on top of your Wii, and you could actually talk back and through them, like kind of like Xbox Live. But I didn't have an Xbox then, so I didn't know about it. It was the coolest damn thing to me. You know, I was oh cool, I could talk to my friends, and I can't like Call of Duty, you know, talk. Oh, I got kills. You can't complain, all that stuff. But I had a lot of fun talking to my friends with the little voice box thing. Uh, I didn't 100% complete that game. Uh, I still had to do the Golden Axe side quest. It was actually a side quest in the game. It was a pain in the ass. And then I didn't complete the museum. And then uh, a few years later, uh, it was a dark time. There was no Animal Crossing until New Leaf came out. Uh, and I was super, super excited to see this. I, I couldn't wait to play this game. And my memories of New Leaf are, um, are because of you guys. When the game came out, uh, I started this new channel, and uh, I decided, what can I make for Animal Crossing? Maybe I can make something really quick. Maybe a Blank is Awesome video. Ah, it's going to take a little few times, so let me do something really quick. Maybe a tidbits and tip or something like that. So I was thinking of names and everything, and I made the How to Make Two Million Bells, and that thing blew up. And then I made How to Make Your Villagers Move, and that thing blew up. How to Clone Items, and that blew up. And then more tidbits and tips, and that blew up. And it was great. And if you guys don't know... All the money I make on these videos, I make about 200 to 400 a month, depending on good months or bad months. Every single penny I make, I donate to Alzheimer's, or I donate to another charity. I keep none of the funds. I would sacrifice everything I have, my soul, my house, everything, just to make other people happy. Just to find a cure for Alzheimer's. If that can find a cure for cancer for Alzheimer's, if I can rip out my heart and offer it to any higher being there is, just so they can give you a cure, I would do it. And guys, making those videos really, really helped me out a lot for a cause. I am now, where is this little card? I had it on my desk before. Oh, there it is. If you guys didn't see this previously, but now I am a 2004 champion. Let's see. The, 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 um, there we go. I'm a 2004 champion for the Alzheimer's Committee. I've donated enough money that they consider me champion status. I have a little card and everything, and it's really, really great. I really, really thank you guys. I've had a lot of memories of that, of course. I can go on for days, and this video originally, when I first recorded this, it took about 12 minutes, and I can't fit this in the video. But I have a lot of memories of Animal Crossing. If you haven't had a chance to play Animal Crossing, go play the original one, or Wild World, or City Folk, or just play all of them. Guys, I really love Animal Crossing, and this video shows why I think Animal Crossing is awesome. Thanks for watching. Compadres y mamacitas, once again, thank you for watching this video. Like I said in the past, when you watch this video, money is made. That money is automatically donated to Alzheimer's Research. At the end of the month, I keep none of the funds, and I play for charity. Finally did it, guys. I finally did the Animal Crossing video. So it's your last Animal Crossing video for a while. So you Animal Crossing fans, you only just like the Animal Crossing videos. If you want to check out my other videos. But until there is going to be a Animal Crossing new game I'll, that's when I'm going to cover it. I'm going to do actually a 365 day walkthrough of it so every day you're going to see a new thing for the whole entire year so it's going to be interesting. Uh, but that's in the future and uh, talking about the talking about other videos, uh, Mega Man Zero is awesome how I said I was going to talk about it. Uh, how I'm going to do that video, how I'm going to do part two is I'm going to restructure that video, how like this video is instructed, it's a character story, blah blah blah, personal memories. That's going to be all to one video so part two is going to be the revamped version of it so it's part one, part two in one video so it's not a complete mess, it's going to be a little bit restructured, a little bit better. For uh, charity wise, uh, starting off uh, this year we're actually started at about $500 so far for Alzheimer's. That's from January to February. I haven't done March yet, but I think I've got I'm getting around 300 or something like that. So, and the funds are doing really, really good. Uh, since I'm big with charity, if you haven't noticed, my hair is a little bit shorter. I actually shaved my entire head for uh, children's cancer. Uh, for St. Baldwick, I raised a few hundred bucks uh, with family members and such and friends, and now it's shorter. Hair grows back, so I mean, why not? If it helps someone else in the world and it's no harm to me, why not do it? Uh, like I said, for every new video that I'm going to be doing, I'm doing a shout-out. If you want to be entered into a shout-out, just send me your video stuff and tell me if you want me to check it out or stuff, if you want me to give you tips or anything. And if I see that you're a YouTuber and you want to get a shout-out, hey, well, I'll give a shout-out. I don't mind. It's YouTube. Well, everyone, I want to help everyone else out. That's my philosophy. So, uh, But this, uh, this video, we have three special guests. Uh, the first one is my good friend and best friend, Brandon. 
uh, or he goes by Kokiri Xavier. His plan is to do every single Zelda game and do every single walkthrough. Uh, he's starting out now, he's taking a little bit of break because he's doing college, but he's going to have videos out soon. His channel, right over here. Then we have Lugia Dialga. She is a great Pokemon remixer and does other stuff. She is a very sweet girl. Uh, so go check out her stuff. She, she really, really loves her community and stuff, and she's a great person, so check her out. And then last we have Glitch City. She is a big, big Pokemon remixer and a big, good Let's Player. She's a really funny girl, and she's really, really nice and everything, so... Check out our channel, those are the three channels there, and if you want to be entered, in, uh, just hit my computer. So if you want to be entered in the next one, just do it. Uh, more videos to come uh, soon. Sorry for the delay of videos. I'm exhausted because I've been editing this video for about 20 hours now. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions or comments, you can shoot me at Twitter. I always answer my Twitter. It's at Pwnapples. If you want to send me an email, it's at pwnapples.gnds7 at gmail.com. And uh, my Skype is at Pwnapples. It's always up, so if you ever want to shoot me a message, we can talk back and forth. Uh, the artwork with uh, Please Stand By was done by uh, one of my fans named Loudy. I'm going to somewhere put the picture, or if I forget, just there's the shout out. Uh, but uh, um, I love getting fan work, artwork, and all that stuff, so if you want to send it, if you like doing that stuff, I don't care. Also, if you want to be one of my pen pals, like an Animal Crossing, uh, just shoot me a message on Twitter or through my email. We write letters back and forth. Here's the whole new thing. I got the letters, and then I got the letter stamp somewhere on my desk. I got the wax. I send you a nice letter. You shoot me a letter. I send you back a letter. Uh, the pen pals waiting for their letters. Uh, they'll be sent out either tomorrow or sometime. Uh, but other than that, that's being way, way too long, like always it is. Uh, that's pretty much it, guys. So uh, I forgot like 20 things that I say, but oh well. <laughs> I really had a lot of fun doing this video. I really love you all, you guys, and uh, stay sexy. Adios.